Welcome to Worked Examples in Accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors, presented by David Hopcroft. If you want more information about Parkbench Tutors, look us up at parkbenchtutors.com or you can find us on Facebook. In this podcast, we are going to look at the production of financial statements for a company, and we're going to look at the income statement and the statement of financial position. So we start, as we would have with a sole trader or a partnership, with a trial balance. And this is a trial balance for a PLC. We've grouped together the expenses. So we're going to say that the expenses are simply operating expenses here. Now, how does this differ from the accounts of a sole trader? Well, you'll notice there are a number of accounts. Ordinary shares, dividend paid, share premium, and retained earnings. Right, these are all separate accounts for a PLC. As with all work on the financial statements then, we must make sure that the trial balance is balanced before we start. And we can see here we have actually balanced it. And we need additional information. In this case, we need the inventory, the start of the year or the end of the previous year, and we need an estimate for the tax to be paid, the corporation tax. So we've got those two additional figures here. The layout of the income statement then is fairly similar, except that after the profit from operations, we're going to look at finance costs, and then we're going to look at tax before we get to the profit for the year. So the first piece of information that we need is the figure for sales, 481700. We're going to take that and we enter that as the revenue for the period. That's our first item into the income statement. The next item is to determine the cost of sales, which is opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory. So we need a piece of information that's not on the trial balance. And that's one of these extra pieces of information here. The inventory at the start was 32,000. So we can now make the calculation and enter the figure as cost of sales. So our cost of sales then took the opening inventory plus the purchases minus the closing inventory. And subtract the cost of sales from revenue, we get a figure for gross profit, 171,700. Now we need to take the figure for the operating expenses, which we also got from the trial balance, 102,000. There we are. And that included all the expense accounts, rent, rates, fuel, telephones, wages, salaries, and so on. Subtract that figure from the gross profit, and we're left with the figure for the profit of the company from operations. So our profit, 69,700 there. Now, what we've also got is a figure representing the interest on loan stock. And we're going to use that in a minute. You can see our loan stock interest is the interest on 22,000. And at 10%, that's 2,200. Now, that must represent a whole year's interest. But be careful, sometimes it only shows a half-year interest, in which case you've got to make the adjustment so that it will include the full year. So we subtract the finance costs from the profit for operations, and that gives us the profit before tax, 67500 We've got an estimate for our corporation tax of 24000 so we're going to use that in a minute, and we, we are, and we can now complete our income statement. We subtract the 24000 from the profit before tax, leaving us with a profit for the year of 43500 And that's our completed income statement. So with that information, we can now start to construct the statement for the financial position of this PLC. There's the layout, and note in the equity and liabilities, this is where we're going to have the accounts for share capital, share premium, retained earnings. So we'll start by looking at the figures for assets. Property, vehicles and equipment are the non-current assets. Inventory, receivables, prepayments, and cash are the current assets. So we'll put those in, add together the non-current assets, property and equipment. We've got 216,000. The current asset accounts that have got something in them are inventories, receivables, and cash. They come to 79,000. We add those together, and we get 216,000 plus 79,000 
is 295,000. So we're now ready to move on to equity and liabilities. So for equity, there are three figures that are relevant, the share capital, share premium and retained earnings. Now we've got the share capital and share premium from the trial balance, the 80,000 and the 25,000. So for the retained earnings, we need the retained earnings at the end of the previous year, plus the profit figure from the income statement, and we need to subtract any dividend that's been paid. So here we are, here's our information. The retained earnings at the start were 88,000, plus the profit from the year, 43,500. Subtract the dividend paid, 1,500, and we have our figure for retained earnings, which is 130,000. Now we need to look at the liabilities and we have as a non-current liabilities we've got the loan stock and of course we've got some current liabilities as well but there's our loan stock 10% loan stock at 22,000 so we're going to put that in that's our non-current liability and we've got current liabilities which include payables and tax payable so our payables were 14,000 and our tax payable we estimated at 24,000 so add that up for all our liabilities 22,000, 14,000, 24,000 comes to 60,000 so that's all our liabilities now we add up our equity and our liabilities and you can see we've got 295,000 and that matches the total assets so we've now completed our statement of financial position for a PLC. That ends this podcast. Thank you for watching and for listening. This podcast was presented by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please look up parkbenchtutors.com or you can look us up and contact us through Facebook. Thank you.